Good day from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Just one week removed from a meteorological body blow of historic proportion from Hurricane Harvey, we are here ready to bring to you our day-long coverage of the return to Earth of three of the crew members of the International Outpost. Here in the flight control room, the flight controllers responsible for the safe oversight of the space station have been stalwart throughout this past week, never wavering from their posts to ensure a safe and seamless operation of the station. Today, these flight controllers are working in concert with the Russian flight control team across the ocean at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karayov on the outskirts of Moscow, who will be responsible for the execution of today's undocking and landing. This is a view from a balcony camera overlooking the Russian flight control room in Karayov. Moments from now, NASA is Peggy Whitson and Jack Fisher, along with Russian cosmonaut Fyodor Yurchikin, will make their way to the vestibule and the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station to say goodbye and farewell to the three crew members who will remain on board the station. The new station commander, NASA's Randy Bresnik, cosmonaut Sergei Rozansky, and Paolo Nespoli of the European Space Agency. At the time of undocking later today at 4.58 p.m. Central Time, 5.58 p.m. Eastern Time, Bresnik and his two colleagues will start the new Expedition 53. Of course, a lot of attention uh, being placed on Peggy Whitson herself as she returns to Earth today holding a treasure trove of records that she has compiled in a mission of almost 10 months in duration. Whitson will land later today with 288 days in space on this flight. 287-plus days on the station itself. She will have circumnavigated 4,623 orbits of the Earth on this mission, a journey of 122.2 million statute miles. Whitson's 288 days in space on three increments, Expeditions 50, 51, and 52, will have totaled 665 days in space on her three long-duration missions on the station, just eight days fewer than your chicken. Whitson has accrued more days in space than any American astronaut in history. She saw the arrival of nine visiting vehicles, the departure of nine visiting vehicles. She conducted four spacewalks, totaling 20 hours and 35 minutes during her three increments on this, her third flight into space. She has now performed 10 spacewalks in her, in her career, uh, more spacewalks than any woman in history, third on the all-time list for, some, for the uh, total aggregate spacewalking hours. This landing today of Expedition 52 aboard the Soyuz MS-04 spacecraft marks the first time that two American astronauts will have returned to Earth in a Russian Soyuz spacecraft since November 26, 2010, when NASA astronauts Doug Wheelock and Shannon Walker landed aboard Soyuz TMA-19 to complete the Expedition 24 and 25 increments. We'll talk more about all of that in a moment. On Friday, the six crew members gathered in the Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station for the traditional change of command ceremony. In that ceremony, Fyodor Yurchikin handed off command of the complex to Randy Bresnik. As we approach the farewells and hatch closure to begin the trek home for Whitson, Yurchikin, and Fisher, let's watch a replay of yesterday's change of command ceremony. Now it's a great time for me. My family think that it's my last flight in space. I am like men who say never say never. Who knows? I ask the God, and he do not answer me, me yet about this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very great time. And it, this time began uh, about two years ago. and change and change, many changes was uh, when we began our training, when we continued our training. My five time in space and five time in station. It's real great station, real great program. And I am very lucky man, and I am very lucky cosmonaut because each my crew, it was the best one. And now I would like to say thank a lot, the best crew in the world. Somebody may say that it's only one crew in the 
space now. <laughs> but guys, it's the best crew. First of all, I would like to say thanks a lot to Jack Fisher. He works with me. He is very young when he began like a young astronaut. Now he is a very experienced man and maybe one of the talented astronauts in the NASA. Not in the NASA, maybe in the world. For a second, I would like to say thanks a lot to Paolo Nespoli. We began working and training together. We were a backup crew member. Then we changed vehicle, changed the, <laughs> changed the <laughs> expeditions, anything else. But we are in space, and Paolo are with us. And I am very, very lucky man with him. I would like to say thanks a lot to Sergey, because we with Sergey it's second time here, and like Jack, Sergey was a talented was a talented cosmonaut. Now he is very experienced cosmonaut, and I hope he continued his uh, experience in space. Who knows? And. Many people ask me about my new crew. Uh, Fyodor, uh, it's only men in your crew. It's impossible for you because each time you flew and uh, in, uh, with you was a woman, somebody like this. And what happened? I told maybe I am too old. But time again changed. And I have the brilliant woman in the world, Peggy Anne Twitzer. And we met with her third time in space. I just a little changed my face, my body. He looks great <laughs> each time. And this time, it's very important for me because it's a new station commander, Randy Bresnik. Randy, thank you very much. You work our backup crew member. And I know about you professional. But guys, I have special it's not guest, special member for this ceremony. And I invite this special guest because it's impossible for me be only alone here. Peggy, please, coming and stay with me. Thank you, ma'am. Randy. I am working, not maybe so hard, but I want to be the crew be together, all together. We do not have nationals here. We had great party, great time. Are you ready for this rule, for continue this rule? Maybe Peggy ask her something else. Well, Randy, I, I think you need to also carry on the traditions of having a good time. Uh, I think you should continue uh, dinner and movie night <laughs> because I think that's a great tradition to have. <laughs> but uh, I am confident that your crew is going to be successful. So, Randy, and if you understand about your rule, please say something. Vault for me, me, for us, for everybody, because it's maybe a new tradition. Taking command of the International Space Station, I receive the symbolic ISS key on behalf of our crew and declare the following. With the knowledge and skills acting as one team, we will implement the flight program with true commitment, assure operating efficiency and integrity of the service and science equipment, safety of crew and station. We will guarantee strict execution of the flight rules and the crew code of conduct. Considering that ISS symbolizes open and collaborating relationships with co-partners, we will fully encourage further interaction and exploration and peaceful utilization of space. Thank you very much, Randy, because I thought that each commander should have the key, not only from station, from soul, each of your crew, from everybody. I thought, what should be the special key yeah, for commanders in station? And I remember the station expedition began from number one. Now it's 52 and continued with 53. And each expedition opened the door to station and opened the door with key. It's like Soyuz key. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, Munich, so, Houston, Huntsville, Munich, Tsukuba, Moscow. We with Peggy and with everybody here invite you the new station commander and give him the key from station. Randy Bresnik, welcome on board. Thank you very much. I will, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to wear this the whole time. <laughs> All right, here comes a, a good view for everybody. Yes. Oh. Well, thank you very much for that, Fyodor, Peggy, Tufish, Paolo, and Sergei. Um, we have a tradition in the Marine Corps that the incoming CO or commander's comments should be shorter than a fighter aircraft in afterburner on the catapult. So I will, I will be brief. Um, it was just, you know, one week ago when Hurricane Harvey's weather started to be uh, felt on Texas shores. And since then, there have been, you know, historic rainfall that, you know, they say Houston hasn't seen in a, in a millennium. And during that time, you know, the Johnson Space Center NASA team showed incredible dedication and fortitude to make sure that they executed their job so that we could be safe up here and you know, work up here while they monitored and controlled this space station for us. You know, that same NASA spirit is what allowed, you know, initially us to get to the moon, to allow all the things in space that allows our international partnership now for this international space station and eventually what's going to be steps and footsteps on Mars someday. And I just want to say that, you know, we will do our utmost to endeavor to show the same dedication and fortitude every single day during increment 53, the same dedication and fortitude that you guys exemplified every single day of increment 52. I am humbled and I am thankful um, for this honor and privilege to be, accept the responsibility as the uh, commander of Humanities International Space Station uh, here in low Earth orbit. And I could not uh, be more blessed to have a finer crew to be able to serve with uh, during our increment. So while my comments are brief, what is not brief is the experience that you guys represent that we're losing tomorrow. Tomorrow, we lose 1,474 days worth of space flight experience. And if you do the math, that's four years and two weeks of space flight experience that you guys cumulatively have together. That is 673 days for Fyodor Nikolaevich. Peggy, eight days behind, right there at 665. Two fish, no slouch himself at 136. Still 90 days more than I've got right now, so <laughs> you're doing well. You're doing well. And when you think about the days of training that it takes for every single day here on orbit, that four, that four years and two months, she, comes across as many, many lifetimes of astronauts and cosmonauts, normal astronauts and cosmonauts. And the effects that you guys will have, you know, the work that you put forward and the effects that you'll have on human spaceflight's future will be felt for many, many years to come. And we are in your debt for the supreme dedication that you guys have to the human mission of exploration. So we would like to say, a grone spasiba, Jaja Fyodor. E spasiba, Mr. Jack. And domoragato gozaimas, American Space Ninja, Peggy. We would like to wish for you Godspeed and Nyaka Pasadka. May you have a self landing. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to Space Ground One for Expedition 53.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you just watched a replay of the change of command ceremony that took place on Friday in which uh, Fyodor Yurchikin handed over command of the International Space Station to NASA's Randy Bresnik. Expedition 53 technically begins at the moment of undocking of the Soyuz MS-04 spacecraft that will bring home your chicken, Peggy Whitson and Jack Fisher with landing scheduled just a few seconds before 8.22 p.m. Central Time, 9.22 p.m. Eastern Time this evening. To run down uh, some of the major milestones uh, between now and landing, uh, your chicken a short time ago was inside the Soyuz spacecraft, activating all of its systems, conducting communications checks with the Russian flight control team in Karyov outside Moscow. The uh, command to begin the process of opening uh, the hooks that have held the Soyuz spacecraft uh, to the docking port at the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the station, that will be issued at uh, 4.56 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time this afternoon. 90 seconds later, springs on both sides of the docking interface will push off against one another at 4.58 p.m. Central uh, to uh, formally uh, mark uh, the moment of undocking. The uh, Soyuz will begin to back away from the Poisk module and will conduct two uh, separation burns, the first of eight seconds in duration, a second one a couple of minutes later of 15 seconds in duration to uh, increase its opening rate away from the station. Over the course of a couple of orbits, the Soyuz will drift to a safe distance away from the station for the deorbit burn of the Soyuz's engines, a four minute, 39 second retrograde firing that will slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit for its descent back to the landing site in south central Kazakhstan. The deorbit burn is scheduled at 7.28 and 54 seconds central time, 8.28, and 54 seconds Eastern Time. Once the deorbit burn is completed, the uh, Soyuz will orient itself uh, with the uh, heat shield. Uh, basically, it's a three-section Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, it will reorient itself uh, for a separation of the three sections of the Soyuz that will occur at 7.56 p.m. Central Time. The only section uh, that is left uh, that we care about is uh, the descent module, the centermost section of the Soyuz, uh, which will be oriented with the heat shield facing the direction of travel to ablate uh, the buildup of temperatures uh, surrounding the Soyuz once it reaches the uh, upper reaches of the Earth's atmosphere of about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, the module separation uh, is scheduled at 7.56 p.m. Central Time. Strapped into the uh, descent module's center seat uh, is the uh, Soyuz commander, that is uh, your chicken, Jack Fisher will be board engineer number one, seated to the left of your chicken, and to the right, that will be uh, the seat for Peggy Whitson in the descent module of uh, the uh, Soyuz MS-04. And there is a view inside the vestibule leading to the open hatchway to the Soyuz MS-04 spacecraft where the crew will gather a short time from now for uh, their farewells and uh, the eventual hatch closure, both uh, for the Soyuz hatch and the hatch to the Poisk module. Again, uh, preparations well underway for the return to Earth of the three crew members who will be landing a few hours from now later this evening. Uh, on the south central step of Kazakhstan. We'll talk about landing preparations at the landing site and uh, the search and recovery forces in just a moment. You're looking at uh, Sergei Rosansky as he is uh, keeping an eye on things there in the, uh, at the vestibule to the Poisk module. Once uh, the modules, uh, the three sections of the Soyuz spacecraft uh, separate from one another, the uh, Soyuz will reach uh, the entry interface or the uh, first uh, traces of atmospheric entry at 7.59 p.m. Central Time, 8.59 p.m. Eastern Time. At that point, uh, Jack Fisher and Fyodor Yurchikin will feel the first uh, sensation of Earth gravity since they were launched uh, on uh, the Soyuz MS-04 back on April 20th. And for Peggy Woodson, the first sensation of Earth's gravity since she was launched back in November along with uh, Oleg Novitsky and Tomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency, who came home on June 2nd as a two-man crew. 
Whitson's mission was extended uh, back in the spring uh, when the Russians elected not to launch an extra cosmonaut uh, in April with Yurchikin and Fisher. uh, Whitson's mission was extended through an agreement between NASA and the Russian Federal Space Agency uh, to maintain a three-person crew on the station until the launch of Bresnik, Rosansky, and Nespoli uh, back in July. Again, uh, the landing is scheduled uh, about 89 miles to the southeast uh, of the remote town of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan, at uh, 8.21 and 50 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.21 and 50 seconds p.m. Eastern Time, if all goes as planned. And again, uh, this view uh, at the passageway uh, between the Poisk module and the uh, Soyuz MS-04, which has been powered up by your chicken and uh, to which uh, your chicken Fisher and DeWitson will be entering momentarily after they say farewells uh, to the three remaining crew members on the station, Randy Bresnik, Sergei Rosansky, and Paolo Nespoli. That is Jack Fisher in the blue shirt uh, in the middle of your screen. Bresnik, uh, Nespoli, and Rosansky will uh, be a three-man crew for only 12 days. There's Bresnik, the new station commander on the right side of your screen. Only a 12-day indirect handover, as it is known, uh, before the launch of the next trio uh, to uh, reside on the International Space Station. That will be Alexander Mazurkin and NASA astronauts Joe Acaba and Mark Vandehei, who will launch on the Soyuz MS-06 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on the afternoon of uh, September 12th U.S. time, the wee hours of uh, September 13th at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Fisher now entering uh, the uh, Soyuz spacecraft, the crew having uh, bid farewell to one another. An opportunity for uh, some final photos. Paolo Nespoli recording video of this. Jack Fisher on the left inside the hatchway. Fyodor Yurchikin in the red uh, shirt and Peggy Whitson on the right in the blue shirt. Once uh, the hatches are closed on both sides of the docking interface, here comes Whitson for a uh, final uh, Farewells, final hugs, as she departs the space station 288 days into this mission. Fyodor Yurchik in uh, patting the hatchway, as if to say, attaboy. 
Again, uh, the departing crew now back inside the Soyuz MSO-4. They'll close the hatch on their side of the docking interface. The same will be done on the Poisk module side of the docking interface. Then leak checks will be conducted uh, for a period of about an hour or so to make sure that we have uh, an airtight seal uh, between the two spacecraft before the depressurization of the small passageway between Poisk and the Soyuz spacecraft. The uh, departing crew will don their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits and conduct uh, systems checks and communications checks on those suits. And the Soyuz hatch closed at uh, 1.41 p.m. Central Time. So, Whitson, Fisher, and your chicken now uh, ensconced inside the uh, Soyuz MSO-4 spacecraft will stand by for the closure of the Poisk module hatch. And the Poisk module hatch closed at 1.43 p.m. So the hatches are now closed uh, between the International Space Station and the Soyuz MSO-4 spacecraft, setting the stage for the undocking of the Soyuz to start the journey home for Peggy Whitson, Jack Fisher, and Fyodor Yurchikin. The uh, undocking scheduled about three hours and 14 minutes from now at uh, 4.58 p.m. Central Time, 5.58 p.m. Eastern Time.
There is uh, Sergei Rosansky in the middle of your screen as he uh, ensured uh, the hatch closure on the Poisk module side of the docking interface uh, to the Soyuz MS-04. Randy Bresnik uh, with his back uh, to the camera and Paolo Nespoli with the video camera on the left side of your screen taking uh, imagery of uh, this first stage of the uh, departure of the Expedition 52 crew from the International Space Station. With the uh, hatches closed uh, between uh, the Soyuz uh, MS-04 and the Poisk module here in the flight control room in Houston, uh, the uh, Orbit 3 team of flight controllers is on console, and they will uh, watch along with their Russian counterparts uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center all of the activities through the time the crew has landed safely on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Uh, on the right side of your screen is Flight Director Zeb Scoville, who has been the lead flight director for Expedition 52, uh, supervising all of the uh, specific activities uh, throughout the course of the increment. In the middle of your view, that's uh, Flight Director Anthony Varia, who is the Flight Director on console for the Orbit 3 team, and a familiar face at the top of your screen, astronaut Don Pettit, uh, who is a Soyuz systems expert and who will be on console lending his expertise uh, throughout the course of the day's activities. Pettit, of course, one of two Americans who first landed uh, on a Soyuz uh, spacecraft back in May of 2003 to wrap up the Expedition 6 increment on board the International Space Station. Moscow Station on Space to Ground 1. Sergey, go ahead. I'm ready to deactivate um, TV since we probably don't need it anymore. We mentioned uh, Peggy Whitson's uh, went very well. And your goes cache of statistics and all of the uh, records uh, that she has set. We'll go back over those in a moment. For your Chicken and Fisher, who launched as a two-man crew back on April 20th, they're wrapping up a mission of 136 days in duration. 2,176 orbits of the Earth, 57.5 million statute miles will have been traveled. Your Chicken, uh, at the time of landing, will have accrued 673 days in space on his five flights. He will be seventh on the all-time endurance list for most days in space, just eight days in front of Peggy Whitson. Jack Fisher, of course, wrapping up his first flight into space. And again, for Whitson, she's completing a 288-day mission, 122.2 million miles traveled, and a total of 665 days in space, placing her eighth on the all-time endurance list. And of course, right at the top, more days in space than any American astronaut in history. The uh, journey home for Whitson Fisher and your chicken will begin uh, just over three hours from now with the uh, undocking of the Soyuz MS-04 from the Poisk module of the International Space Station as this animation depicts. A couple of separation burns will send the Soyuz to a safe distance away from uh, the International Space Station for the deorbit burn, the retrograde engine firing of four minutes, 39 seconds in duration to slow the Soyuz down, allowing it to drop out of orbit to begin its trek back to Earth. The deorbit burn will occur at 7.28 p.m. Central Time this evening. 
The next order of business will be the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz spacecraft. The middle section with the crew strapped into their respective seats uh, is the only section that survives re-entry. The uh, heat shield repels uh, the uh, intense heat of re-entry, 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, building up around the spacecraft until uh, the command is issued closer to the landing site to open up the parachutes, a series of chutes, First, uh, the drogue chutes, uh, then pilot chutes, and then the main chute uh, will be commanded to open just after 8 p.m. Central Time. The Soyuz then will uh, glide uh, to its landing site in south-central Kazakhstan, southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, the soft landing engines to fire a few seconds right before touchdown, which is scheduled at 8.21 and 50 seconds p.m. Central Time, 9.21 and 50 seconds p.m. Eastern Time. The Expedition 52 crew will be home. In the town of Jezkazgan, uh, the uh, search and recovery forces comprising the Ros Aviatsa search and recovery teams for the Russian side and a support team of NASA personnel, they uh, are asleep in their hotel in uh, the town of Jezkazgan, preparing to board uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters for the uh, short helicopter ride from Jezkazgan to uh, the landing site. They will, be, uh, they will begin to deploy in sequential fashion in those Russian Mi-8 helicopters later this evening to arrive in a circular racetrack pattern around the landing site waiting for the Soyuz spacecraft to arrive on scene. The uh, unique feature of uh, what will happen tonight is um, a slightly modified uh, version of the usual return of the U.S. astronauts, Whitson and Fisher, to Houston. Uh, because of the uh, after effects of Hurricane Harvey, uh, the NASA Gulfstream jet was unable to leave Houston in time to make it to the staging city of Karaganda uh, in order to uh, uh, perform what is called a direct return of the crew back to Houston. So working in collaboration with the ISS partnership, the European Space Agency stepped up to the plate and offered the use of its plane uh, that has been uh, to Karaganda before. The European Space Agency's plane is uh, going to be arriving in Karaganda. Uh, they will be poised in Karaganda to await the arrival of Whitson and Fisher, along with your chicken, of course. Uh, they will pick up Whitson and uh, Fisher and fly them back to the European Astronaut Center's uh, location in Cologne, Germany, where the NASA Gulfstream jet uh, will be uh, located, pre-staged. That NASA Gulfstream jet uh, left Houston earlier this morning and is en route to Cologne to take a handoff of Whitson and Fisher from the ESA personnel who are uh, collaborating uh, with this uh, joint uh, return of the two U.S. astronauts. The uh, return of Whitson and Fisher to Houston is still scheduled for Sunday night, uh, just about the same time they would have returned uh, to Houston had the NASA Gulfstream jet done this all by itself. No loss of science, no loss of any of the critical uh, research samples on board, uh, but uh, ESA stepping up to the plate to lend a helping hand in support of the ISS partnership. Views from a variety of external cameras on the International Space Station as it flies 252 miles above the Earth, just uh, to the northeast of Japan, entering an orbital sunrise over the North Pacific Ocean. So to recap, uh, the hatches are closed uh, between the Soyuz spacecraft and the Poisk module of the International Space Station. Inside the Soyuz, uh, beginning a series of leak checks and donning their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits are the departing crew members, Peggy Whitson and Jack Fisher of NASA, and the Soyuz commander, Fyodor Yurchikin, wrapping up uh, an historic mission on board the orbital outpost. With that, we'll wrap up uh, our hatch closure coverage uh, 
everything is poised and all set uh, for the undocking of the station, uh, undocking of the Soyuz spacecraft from the station just over three hours from now. Undocking is scheduled at 4.58 p.m. Central Time, 5.58 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be back with our coverage for all of that in just two and a half hours at 4.30 p.m. Central, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time as uh, the stage is now set for the return of the Expedition 52 crew to the steppe of Kazakhstan later this evening. With that, uh, we'll see you back here in about two and a half hours for our undocking coverage. In the meantime, thanks for watching. This is Mission Control Houston.